So uh, due to the sensitive nature of this content, we've had to present in disguise and assumed identities. I'm Sterling Archer. I am Professor Freaksworth. Or at least that's the identity we'll be assuming. We don't actually believe we are these people. All right, do you want to go over the agenda, Professor? Yeah, so the agenda is we'll uh, go over IPv6 is awesome. What about Ma did, did you oh, do this? Not again. All right. Uh, this keeps happening. There are some powerful forces here. Uh, okay, all right, all right, all right. Fix. All right, first we're going to go over what makes this theory plausible. Well, you know, we have to have a good foundation of, you know, this conspiracy. Uh, we're going to go over the lies, the technical truth. Uh, we had a part, but somebody in our organization sold us out. Uh, so we, we had to redact part of it. Uh, it was kind of shocking anyway. Uh, we'll go over some of our research results we can cover, the full truth behind IPv6, the resistance and how you can help, and then we'll do questions and probably more likely flee. So uh, what makes this theory plausible? Uh, the need for IPv6 is agreed on by way too many people. Even Congress agrees on the need for IPv6, which makes it completely suspicious in our mind. <laughs> people in power generally are out to get you. Uh, and we have a shadowy enemy with a hard to prove existence, which is key for any conspiracy theory. Uh, we've also conducted extensive international research. Uh, you know, put in long, long hours traveling around. So another thing that we've done is uh, research to, to provide some evidence that this is personally what I've been working on. Uh, I've collected a lot of data about subliminal messaging that's been hidden. Wait, 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 wait. You, you mean subliminal messaging? Uh, well, they're, they're basically the same thing. No, no, they're not. Subdermal means below the skin. Uh, okay, well, maybe. I, you know, we shouldn't be arguing about semantics up here. Sem semant semantics, they're completely different. <laughs> God damn it, your illiteracy is screwed us again. Uh, maybe we should skip the next few slides then. <laughs> uh, All right, well, uh, moving on. We've got something else that's key for any good conspiracy theory, blurry pictures of people. In this case, the Queen of England. Uh, now, for the record, I don't think this is the Queen of England. I think you could be anyone. I assure you, it is. Something the professor collected, and uh, he's a little crazy. All so, right. <clears throat> the lies, there are a lot of lies. IPv4 uh, addresses oxygen is ridiculous. We're gonna prove that's completely false. The idea that NAT will not work as a solution has been proposed by NIST, again, a lie. A lot of people think IPv5 never existed. We're going to reveal the truth about that. And finally, the biggest lie is that IPv6 is here to help us. So the myth of IPv4 ex address exhaustion. There's only 4.3 billion addresses. You know, some firms are buying up these address spaces to hoard them. We'll discuss that in great detail, as well as the artificial scarcity they're creating. Uh, and I, I made a little pie chart here of uh, our estimated IPv4 usage. <laughs> What, what's actually in use and what we suspect of being hoarded. Most of it. Um, we've also run into the argument that NAT won't work, that NAT isn't good enough. But, you know, it wasn't designed for production systems and, and you know, the internet and how much traffic there is. Well, you know, it wasn't for designed to you know, post pictures of your cat either, but you're still going to do that. There's or no, your mom. Yeah, well, hey. There's no true peer-to-peer -peer communication. There's no dynamic configuration. So what? The real reason, NAT is private. Keeps people, you know, keeps activities private. You know, they're less able to track you across different networks. You know, IPv5 never existed. You know, these claims are completely false. It provided a secure, private, anonymous communication system. You know, it was awesome. Of course, all the known developed designers are missing, and researchers we had looking into the reproducing this protocol have been injured severely. Tragically. <laughs> Uh, and we also have, you know, IPv6 is here to help with privacy, you know, privacy addresses. That IPv4 devices would use DHCP uh, from moving from network to network. That keeps, you know, you get a new address every time. You know, that seems ideal. Why wouldn't you want that? IPv6 device has an interface identifier, you know, based on the MAC address of your device. You know, the alleged solution is the privacy uh, extensions that are in for uh, stateless addresses and automatic configuration IPv6. Of course, you know, this is only if a bunch of other devices have IPv6 on that network. If you have very small uh, networks, they're going to track you across them. And that's exactly what they want. Uh, the real concerns, you know, these small networks allow that. 
administrators want to track you in case you do something bad, like give a talk on how they're trying to take over the world. And now we're going to go on to uh, the technical truth. So, you know, IPv4 has four plus billion addresses. That should be plenty. You know, the address blocks are handed out inefficiently. You know, we should let the free markets decide. Uh, hoarders should be punished. You know, and we have a sliding scale for this. You know, and not every punishment is appropriate. So there are four, four billion, two hundred ninety-four million, nine hundred sixty-seven thousand, two hundred ninety-six addresses out there. Efficient distribution would result in plenty of space. Millions and millions of addresses could be freed up that are technically exhausted, and we're going to go over how that is. They're address, you know, they're given out inefficiently. So there's class A, class B, class C. You know, three options is not market efficient. Uh, what's even more ridiculous is that there are 23 letter, or 26 letters in the alphabet. Why what? the IETF could not use all 26 is ridiculous. We should just when did you put that in there? That's no, it's, there are 26 letters in the alphabet, all right? All right. Move on. All right. All right, so I made up this nice bar graph and our line chart, which is, you know, helps add legitimacy to our, our claims here of uh, what we believe the hoarding scale looks like. And at this rate, even if we added IPv6, companies would continue, continue to hoard until it plateaued again, and then we'd be stuck in the same boat. Uh, yeah, the idea of peak IP is ridiculous as peak oil. It's just a big scam. Microsoft spent $7.5 million on IPv4 addresses. You know, and it's been all over the press. IPv4 addresses will be hoarded uh, for a black market. So one of the things we promised is that hoarders would be named today, and we will. One of the biggest that really makes us angry is Canada. <laughs> Aaron has assigned over 80 million IP addresses to Canada. But there's only 35, less than 35 million people in the whole country. And you know, to be honest, most of them don't even have running water, let alone a computer. <laughs> So what in the world do we need that many IP addresses for? Here's another list. Now at the very top you see the US Department of Defense with over 280 million IP addresses. Now that's just the ones we know about. This is from public records from the, the regional registrars. AT&T has 102 million. Now granted they're a big ISP and everything, but still 100 million IP addresses. Others, Hewlett Packard has 38 million, the Bluth Company has 28 million, Ford Motor has 26 million, this is ridiculous. Uh, General Electric, it's a division of the Shinehart Wood Company, they have 17 million. Now, one of the things that we found very suspicious in our research was that the OD has 280 million IP addresses. It's very close to the number of people in the United States. These are all true facts. So, <clears throat> we started wondering why. And the most logical conclusion that we could come to is they're being used to track people, that each person in the US, or at least most people, have an implant with a unique IEP address. And as the population grows, the Department of Defense is going to need more IP addresses. So we <clears throat> enlisted one of the professor's uh, graduate students and took some imaging of their, their skulls. And uh, yeah, at first it looked pretty normal, but if you notice the lower right quadrant, there's a bit of a shadow. And, and <clears throat> we, we inspected it, we, we managed to extract a, a device from the uh, patient that uh, was a, a small little chip that had been embedded into their head. Now, unfortunately, the person died, and we weren't able to figure out what exactly it was for. Uh, we think that it probably released some poison or something, and that's why the person died. We're pretty positive we figured it out and can remove it safely. So if you'd like to be checked, I have a van out in the parking lot. <laughs> I, that service plus many other medical procedures. I strongly I recommend that you do not go out there. He has no qualifications at all to do this. Uh, that van is basically rolling probable cause. I would not get even without 100 yards of that. Uh, so we, we also did an IP address audit. We wanted to see you know, where things were distributed. In addition to the hoarders, we wanted to see where everything was, was allocated. If you add up all of the IP addresses from the, the registrars, Aaron, Ripe, etc., uh, you come up with about three and a half million, or excuse me, three and a half billion IP addresses. Now, almost 600 million are for various reserve networks uh, defined in RFC 5735, you know, like uh, private address space, link, local, local host, so on. But if you add these up, you're missing over 200 million IP addresses. Where are they? Now, some people in the IP for Truth community think that. Uh, that's part of the conspiracy, they're being hoarded. Now, to be honest, I have to blame this on RIPE because I've seen a lot of uh, re uh, network penetration test reports from RIPE for IP address space that's clearly in Europe, but they don't know nothing about. So I think that if the Europeans got their act together and started recording IP addresses correctly, we wouldn't have that problem. 
So, how are we going to stop people from hoarding? Public shaming isn't enough. Some people think that, you know, you just throw somebody up in stocks and they're going to be embarrassed and they're going to stop doing it. Being pelted with tomatoes is not going to stop this problem. We need to do something more severe. Now, depending on how many IP addresses you're hoarding, if it's a Class C, I say douse them in honey and feathers. It's embarrassing, but it washes off easily. It's no big problem. Class B, you're talking about 65,000 IP addresses. There, got to go with pitch or with super glue or something. You're going to have to scrub really hard to get it off. But for the Class A's, yeah, it's over 16 million IP addresses. You've got to do boiling tar and feathers. You drive the message home. However, <coughs> <laughs> Another uh, option is torch and pitchfork, pitchfork mobs. <laughs> uh, we were talking just the other day about how they're very unfairly portrayed in movies as being irrational and of no use, but really they serve a very useful purpose in preventing unethical behavior and research. They have a very rich historical tradition that we should not be abandoning. If, if a thousand people with torches and pitchforks showed up in front of Hewlett Packard, you better believe they're going to relinquish those 38 million IP addresses. <laughs> I think it's worth a shot. All right, well, there we have part four, which has been redacted. So I just replaced this slide with a nice picture everyone can enjoy. Moving on, the full truth. Who's not to blame? Highlighted ancient texts we'll go over. Numerological analysis. We'll discuss the secret meetings, where they've been meeting, what they've been talking about. Intercepted communiques, the actors, and of course, the nefarious cabal. So the first thing that we want to make clear is the Irish are not to blame for this conspiracy. There's a fringe element of the IP for Truth movement that blames the Irish, and that's not fair. To be blunt, those people are racist. We're not racist. They think that it's some sort of scheme to, to get revenge for the potato famines. It's not the truth. The caricatures of the, the so-called Simeon Irish that were popular in the 19th century became very inappropriate long ago. It's a shame that some people in the IP for Truth movement are trying to resurrect them. Uh, and, and really, we shouldn't be judged on the fringe. Every movement, every tr uh, truth has some sort of fringe element that, that is crazy. We're not crazy. Please don't judge us by the racists. So there's a lot of a uh, number of prophecies throughout history that have, have foretold the, the damage that IPv6 would do to our world and how, how IPv4 is really good. Uh, we're going to talk about the Tatara tablets, which are some of the earliest forms of human writing from uh, 5300 BC. Uh, we're going to go over uh, Mayan text from 250 AD, which is the, the very end of their civilization, probably not a coincidence. Uh, there's a Mongolian prophecy from the 12th century AD. And, and then finally, uh, we're going to talk about a, a Portuguese prophecy. That's a little complicated. You'll see in, in a little bit. So this is a Chartar tablet. I can go look it up on the internet, some of the, the earliest form of uh, human writing that's known. And it's been analyzed by archaeologists for a long time. It's a little hard to see in this. I mean, you know, it's 7,000 years old. So uh, this is a, a black and white version that's a little easier to read. Now, archaeologists have been able to analyze this compared to other, uh, you know, cultures in, in the same area and whatnot. Uh, it, it's from what is now uh, Turkey. In the lower left hand quadrant, uh, they've identified these symbols, these pictographs, as corresponding to a time of plenty where the, the crops were, were good and you know, hunting was good and, and whatnot. The lower right hand corner uh, is, is, a, is a time of death where there was fires and starvation. I, and I don't, to be honest, I don't understand how that works, but uh, I'll tell you, trust the archaeologists. One thing they've always been puzzled about though is that the top, on the left, associated with the good times, was four hash marks. And on the right, associated with the bad times, is six hash marks. Now, this is not... <laughs> this is not conclusive evidence. I'll be the first to admit that. Uh, it, it could mean a lot of things, but it kind of makes you stop and wonder, you know? It was this, our doom foretold 7,000 years ago. Uh, something that's a little bit more obvious comes from, from the Mayans uh, much more recently, a little over 2,000 years ago. Like I said, at the, or excuse me, almost 2,000 years ago, at the end of their, uh, their civilization. This is a photograph of it. The, the translation is, In the time when great talking spreads across the land, the false prophets of six will try to lead the people astray. They will make great promises to seduce the followers of the four. But beware, the six is a demon that will bring only great darkness. When it arises, the demon will desolate the land and only the false prophets will prosper. I, I think it's pretty obvious that... It does not sound promising. No, not in the least bit. So, 
There's also a Mongolian prophecy. Uh, this is uh, from 1134 AD. Now there's a lot of, this is fragmented. Um, as you can see, there's a photograph of one of the, the uh, I think it's uh, parchment or, or something along those lines uh, that, that's damaged. So there's, there's pieces missing, but you can still get a pretty good picture of it. Uh, some of the highlights are it correctly identifies the invention of the internet and the World Wide Web. Uh, now, the Mongolian 17-year calendar has uh, uh, animals associated with it, and they correctly line up with the actual dates when the internet was invented and, and whatnot. Uh, it refers to the fourth and the sixth languages. Now, I mean, obviously, uh, 800 years ago, there wasn't, or, or 900 years ago, they didn't have a word protocol, so you have to realize that they're, they're struggling, these seers were struggling with their limited language uh, to describe modern technology. So. It's a little long, I'm not going to be able to go over all of it, but for example, the, the, the beginning of it is in the year of the fox, which matches up to the year that, uh, the, the year the internet was invented was the year of the fox, the army, DARPA presumably, of the great nation of the West, I presume, yeah, uh, something maybe builds, I uh, don't know, relays across the world, and the great nation will become greater. And the merchants of the world will see the relays and something profit, so the great nation will share the relays with all the merchants. Now, obviously, the, the uh, DARPA eventually shared, started sharing uh, the internet with uh, merchants. Uh, it goes on to talk about how corrupted men of the world will want to destroy the signals, um, that uh, they realize they have to, that they, the evil men invent a sixth language for the signal relays. But they were ignored because the, uh, the army and the, the merchants realized that the, the language was good. Um, uh, let's see, it goes on. So this is the last. Sorry, what's that? Uh, and with great fear, the evil men will see that the people are gaining wisdom. So they will redouble their efforts to destroy. Blank. The evil men will spread a great lie across something web. Uh, something fourth language is simple and only for the stupid. And the army and the merchants will be fooled by the evil men and will begin to speak the sixth language. The evil men will rejoice for their dom domination of the world and the destruction of something is nigh. And uh, we don't know what that something is. Uh, it could be the internet. It, it could be the world. I, I think we can agree that it's something we shouldn't find out. So we have the Portuguese prophecy. And this is a little complicated because uh, we can't actually show it to you. Now, we're risking our lives to, to bring this to you. I mean, we obviously were in disguise, but there's still a lot of risk associated with it. But there's some things that are worse than death. The, the Portuguese prophecy, the, prophecy, the text in it is uh, in the possession of the Church of Practicology, which is that, that cult that was started by Stan Lee. Well, well, and, well I, I don't want, you don't want to offend them. It's the, the alien king that lives inside Stan Lee's head. Uh, yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah. But uh, anyway, we, we can't, they're gonna, they have a copyright on it. We can't show it. Uh, it's very unfortunate. But we have seen it, and uh, we, we've, we've been able to perform a lot of analysis of it, provide some clues about decoding the RFCs of uh, IPv6. And most importantly, it reveals how cabal members that are controlling IPv6 can be identified. So uh, we also want to talk a little about TimeCube. Because TimeCube, uh, while it's not directly related to IPv6, there is a lot of truth that Gene Ray has put on his website. Um, so for example, if you're not familiar with TimeCube, this is from their website this morning. TimeCube math is absolute proof you're retarded. You can't comprehend fact that cube four simultaneous 24 hour days, it goes on. Uh, timecube.com. So, also, there's some more excerpts. Uh, full rotated square will create 16 corners, 96 hours, four simultaneous 24 hour day circles within the single imaginary cube of rotation. This is the important part. Four rotations in a 24 hour day are good. Obviously, IPv4. Six rotations is educated, stupid, evil. <laughs> IPv6. One corner day equals evil, four corners equals four corner days, evil one day God claims corrupts all academia. Nine to six hour cubic day debunks one day as witchcraft. It, it, clearly Gene Ray is a modern day seer. I mean, it's Math just that, does not lie. No, yeah, exactly. Math does not lie. So we did analysis of six as well. Brand six was a Nazi official in charge of directing police operations in Germany. If success, they successfully invaded the United Kingdom. Coffins are buried six feet under, underground. Coincidence? Maybe. MI6, also referred to by the nickname Six, is a secret intelligence gathering organization. Six in Roman numerals is VI, so we think there may be some anti emacs connections as well to this. Uh... We also did uh, some further studies. Area 51, five plus one equals six. The Mayan prophecies, prophecies again. 
It's supposed to, the world's supposed to end on 1221. One plus two plus two plus one, six. <laughs> six, six, six. Obviously. 360, uh, and they, again, another number in nature. Divided by six equals 60. Divided by six equals 10. Divided by two equals five. That makes no but, sense. Oh, okay. sorry. Uh, yeah. All right. Six plus six. Oh, nice. uh, 12 signs of the satanic zodiac. The prisoner was number six. You, you, are you ready to pick up again? I, I think I can. Okay. Okay, as a, as a perfect number, six is related to the mezzanine prime three, since two uh, times two, to the, two squared minus one equals six. The next perfect number is 28. It, it speaks for itself. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is you again. Okay, why are all public versions of IP composite numbers? Obviously, not a hatred of even numbers, since there wasn't, you know, a two wasn't used either. But we have IPv4 to IPv6, you know. What, what, what's wrong with prime numbers? I, I have a theory that because prime numbers are used for encryption, they think that it's secure or something. I don't know. Yeah. That's just a theory. <laughs> Makes me think. So uh, we mentioned the RFC numerological analysis. Now, there's five primary RFCs associated with IP version 6. Uh, there's a lot of peripheral ones, but these are the core five. So if you take the numbers of those RFCs and then look at the differences between the numbers, while they're incremented, uh, you come up with four. Now, clearly, 2635 is a little bit of an anomaly, and we had to think about this one for a long time, but if you drop the two off and reorder them, it makes a lot more sense. <laughs> so, we're able to extrapolate this out into an equation. <laughs> it's a little complicated, and from that equation, we're able to ha obtain the whole sequence. Now, this is just what we can put on the screen. There's obviously, it'll go on to, you know, ad infinitum. Once you take these numbers and put them into, or, or extract the characters from RFC 1883, the original IPv6 specification, you come up with the text. When you parse it out a bit, <clears throat> some plans become clear. We will control all, and then a series of what are uh, obviously longitude and latitude coordinates in a year. We map these out, <laughs> several number of cities. Now the weird one is that is the fourth one because it, the 2002, there's just six numbers, uh, or seven, excuse me, seven numbers, and we're not exactly sure why there's seven numbers instead of uh, longitude and latitude coordinates. Uh, there's some fringe people, well, it's your idea, Professor. You, I'm a French person, yeah. Yeah, he thinks that it's Stargate coordinates. I think that's crazy, but uh, <laughs> we, have, we do have some evidence in a minute here. So what are these meetings? We gathered information from using mostly disposable teaching assistants. Uh, Prague, 1991, initial meeting to push IPv6, then 10 years old. Determined fear must be used. What better place than Prague? I believe they're going to reopen the torture of castles. In fact, we may still have some students there. We should go check. London, 1996, second meeting to push IPv6, then 15 years old. Capital is needed to acquire resources and create an ar artificial scarcity. Misinformation campaign begins. The Queen joins the cabal. Boston, 1999. Discussion on learning from the Millennium Blog propaganda. Just lies, nothing but lies. What happened? Nothing. Fear tactics of people of the, uh, losing access to pets.com or short lived. <laughs> Secret meetings, unknown location, 2002. Key players of the cabal meet. Pictures smuggled out of location at great cost. Communications with grad student lost before location disclosed. Possible they just got drunk with friendly locals who were also great hosts. If anyone knows this location, please contact us. It's critical. Outside Vienna, 2004, emergency meeting. Researchers and unknown government agencies suspect foul play. Uh, evidence of a resistance is discussed. Our lives are put in danger for the first time. Live blogging of subjects like uh, friends, foul movements, I <laughs> determined to... <laughs> I'm, what? Sorry. <laughs> We're moving on. Miami? Want to talk about Miami? Okay. I think I can. Progress meeting in Miami, 2010. Police actively providing security for the cabal. Our last uh, gullible TA is discovered, and we really have no idea what happened to him. Uh, the, the actors. <laughs> Who is behind this? You know, we discussed the cabal, but it may be you know, the nanobots. XKCT tried to warn us. Devices needed to address and communicate with a nanobot cloud consisting of more than four billion bots. Consumption of all matter, Earth matter, is now imminent if IPv6 goes ahead. They may be controlling the minds of the other players, including the cabal. 
If you go to the XKCD website, look at the cartoon, go to the forum, there's right, so a large this, methodical this discussion. Is not, this is not this something that not most people in the IPv4, uh, the IP for Truth community believe. This is a, the professor's very impressionable. Every time he goes to XKCD, he just thinks it's the truth. This is really just garbage. Uh, so, what do we know about the cabal? We've been able to gather a fair amount of intelligence from analyzing the prophecies, from the agents that we've snuck into their secret meetings. We know they wear funny hats. They're evil. They were originally composed of the Pentaveret. The Vatican, the Queen, the Gettys, the Rothschilds, and Colonel Sanders. <laughs> yeah, before he we went tits up. Uh, <clears throat> so, who's in the cabal? We know that Vince Cerf is. This is a very funny hat that he's wearing here. He, he looks ridiculous. He invented most of the internet. Uh, it sounds like a made-up name. It's, uh, yeah, Bitzer. I mean, you might as well go by something like Ulysses Q. Albuquerque. I mean, it makes no sense. Where was he really born, though? We have tried to find his birth certificate. He will not tell us. He won't give it to us. It makes us very suspicious. Supposedly, he was born in the United States, but with a name like that, I don't know. Yeah, it, it's, it's a mystery. Tim Berners-Lee, also wearing a funny hat and a weird robe. He invented the World Wide Web. Uh, he was made Knight Commander of the British Empire. Uh, there was a lot of suspicion at the time of the IP for Truth community that this was done to buy his silence, to make him happy. That perhaps he was disgruntled with the cabal. Uh, since then, he's fled from England. He now lives in Cambridge, Massachusetts. We have some evidence of, of the theory that we're going to be revealing in a little bit. Subcommander Marcos, also known as Mark <laughs> Mueller. He was adopted in Brazil. His biological parents are unknown. We know he's of German ancestry, and there's some evidence that he may be a clone. <laughs> and finally, the supreme commander of the cabal. We don't know his name. He wears no hat, but he has larger lace cuffs, which presumably is significant of his rank. Uh, he's probably a vampire based on how he looks. And also, we think he might be Strom Thurmond's secret twin brother. So we've, we've intercepted some communiques, uh, as I said. Um, this is from something I gathered from a honeypot operation when, down in Miami. Uh, this is originally an email from uh, Subcommander Marcos to Queen Elizabeth. It says, Elizabeth, Berners-Lee is getting restless. This is from 2001, and unhappy with our strategy. He hasn't threatened to leave yet, but I'm afraid that he will, uh, that will be next. He can be a valuable asset, so I'd rather not kill him. Perhaps if you give him some kind, of, some kind of honor, he'll at least keep his mouth shut. And then she replies, done, I'll make him a KBE. He'll love calling pe people calling him Sir Tim. Elizabeth Regina. Uh, yeah, they, they have a confidentiality note to Vaughn too, it's kind of weird. Uh, so also there's a lot of ties between the cabal and the information security industry because uh, you know, basically they're afraid that we're gonna find out the truth like the professor and I did. So they, they keep, try to keep people in line. This is an email that was discovered, for, one of many emails discovered, from the cabal to the head of a, uh, a research, large research organization in the information security industry. Uh, from the Supreme Commander says, Nick, you've been doing a great job in suppressing IPv6 research. You'll be richly rewarded. I'll be sending you some more agents soon. And the guy replies, thank you, sir. There are some troublemakers that may need to be addressed. We'll dispose of the bodies as normal. We're hoping this isn't us, but uh, it's one of the many reasons why we're protecting our identities today. Uh, so, what else is the cabal done? <laughs> one thing that we know for sure, because of interrogations of a, of a captured uh, agent, they killed Paul McCartney. Um, this was leaked out by the Beatles, and they're, you know, covered to Abbey Road, I think everyone knows that, that Paul's not wearing shoes there to show he was killed. But we're not really, we know that he, they killed him, but we're not sure why. One thing that's been tossed around that hasn't had a lot of evidence is that because there were four Beatles, they felt somehow that was a support of IPv4. They're kind of crazy, we don't really know why. What, what other nefarious actions have they done? They rewarded Al Gore with inventing the internet. <laughs> then they punished Al Gore for not supporting IPv6 once he joined the resistance. Uh, and now he's doomed to live out the rest of his days in a capilla fish jar. Other, other actions? Wait, wait, early in our <laughs> what the hell? That was told to you in confidence. We have to get the truth out. They also killed his cat, Schrodinger. I'm also gathering a lot of evidence. The, the TSA, who's, I think we know who controls the TSA, stole one of my socks on the way here. <laughs> so, what other initiatives is the cabal under, uh, undertaking? Well, this is something that has cabal fingerprints all over it. This is an article from The Telegraph uh, in 2007. Scientists develop remote-controlled pigeon. 
Why would they want to do this? Well, that's what the professor and I were wondering when we first saw this. And, and basically what we've decided is that the experiments on the birds are multi-purpose. One, this is tied to some brain monitoring, controlling uh, efforts that, that we'll be discussing in more detail later. And it's also uh, tied to advanced implementation of RC-1149. Now, obviously there's some serious ethical considerations with experimenting on animals like Ignoring this. the serious ethical considerations, we have the obvious violation of international bird law. They're using a land-based bird, which you know, is illegal, which we but then decided to use a seabird, which is totally illegal. Pigeons are legal Not tender in many countries. So the professor and I pondered what to do about this, and we came up with a solution. Pigeons are very this, hard to catch. This is some documentation from one of our early experiments. It was very promising. Uh, we trained a pelican to deal with the pigeon threat. <laughs> Trying to turn around for the resistance. Things were looking good. We were very optimistic that we were, this was going to be an end of the cabal's pigeon research. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, one of our agents was involved, uh, took a video at, at a cabal training facility and smuggled this out to us. This was just heartbreaking. This is one of the <laughs> pelicans that was trained by the professor. So you can see Sidorka, killer whale, eating it. And they just ripped it to pieces. It just, it, was a good friend of it, you know, all that was left was just floating bits of chum by them and they were done. And we don't know what to do. I mean, we're, they, every time we, we seem to make an advance, they, they get, come up with something to stop us. Other cabal initiatives, they're tied to MySpace. Well, they can't all be you know, winners. That's good news because it shows they can be defeated. <laughs> Uh, they funded research of uh, the brain monitoring technology, implanted electrodes, fMRI, etc. Um, so, what's in the future for the cabal? Well, monitoring all PV6 communications is pretty clear. I mean, if they control the protocol, they can monitor whatever they want. They can also implant thought monitoring chips into every human. That was one of the main purposes of the, the pigeon experiments. We have strong evidence that, unfortunately, we can't, we're not ready to reveal yet that IP version 7, or version 8, depending on what they go with, I, it's not really clear depending how... Depending on your prime number conspiracy. Theory. Right, exactly. Uh, prime composite, yeah. <clears throat> that it's going to support thought control tips, which is just horrifying. So, the next, the question that we have next is, um, is this just the tip of the iceberg? <laughs> the conspiracy goes much deeper. What, what else are they going to be doing? It's terrible. We have CIA NSA roundups, the need for anonymity, avoiding social networks, sorry, face plus, uh, distributed cell structures. First, the CIA NSA roundups. You know, there's a suspicious absence of anti IPv6 groups. Of all the protest groups out there, why not any anti IPv6 ones? Why is it just us? Doesn't make any sense. They have not yet denied, you know, internment camps for IPv6 resistance. Uh, we haven't really asked them just to be on the safe side. Yeah, we don't want to do ourselves. <laughs> Seems needless. So, okay. We, you know, would we dress like this if it wasn't required? Yeah, our corporate overlords do not fit the bill. We had to buy these disguises ourselves because they're probably part of the conspiracy. Also, I, I took this hotel from my hotel room. There are black helicopters flying around Las Vegas. <laughs> and I, I called down to the front desk and they insisted that it was just tourists, but I think that's a bunch of baloney. I mean, clearly they're monitoring me. The need for anonymity. We're, we're going to use a Guy Fox mask here, but that's sort of been ruined. Uh, you know, oh, sorry. IPv6 forces uh, implementing this technology in no, smart, in no small part to track you. Uh, we've covered the privacy concerns, but additional steps need to be taken. You know, Tor may be comprised of uh, powerful NSA networks. It will be, yeah. Uh, avoiding social networking. Voluntary tracking of social identity uh, activities seems harmless enough, but you know, tying social network profiles to IPv6 addresses, which are tracked from network to network, eventually no anonymity. Doesn't matter which Face Plus service you use. So avoid social networking. Most of the groups and clubs you see on Facebook about opposing IPv6 are just traps. I mean, to be honest, only a moron would join something publicly. We did not start that. No, this is probably run by the cabal or some agency they control. Anyone that joins it's going to be monitored and eventually rounded up for an internment camp. The most damning evidence, Face Plus didn't invite us to their speaker party. Clearly, they're afraid of the truth. You can't explain that. <laughs> Go ahead. 
So <clears throat> one of the things that we suggest for, for you know, keeping the resistance strong is to use a distributed cell structure. It really gets a bad rap because of its use by other um, less honorable organizations. Uh, make sure that the cell members aren't federal agents. Uh, that's really important. Or cabal agents, even more important. Don't trust anyone. Probably the safest cell structure is a, just a cell of one. Now, I did some research on, on, on distributed cell structures and um, it's really kind of confusing. I don't I really Wait, understand what these, these are supposed to be. That doesn't make any sense at all. Well, I know. I agree. So, like, yeah, I pulled these off of Wikipedia right. and I don't understand how it works. But probably being in a distributed cell is the best way to avoid being killed. So, so why, you know, why did we do this? Uh, the truth must be told. You know, the cabal must be stopped. They're evil. Also, only animals wait in line for two hours for badges. <laughs> All right, any questions? All right, we are leaving it. Oh, yeah, question, yes. Uh, yeah, I opened the box. I, I did, I destroyed the state, the wave state. Anyone else? Uh, I, yeah, he, he, they were trying to throw us off. He, you must be with the cabal. That yeah. sounds awfully <laughs> suspicious. <laughs> they are, they are <laughs> not fake. <laughs> uh, we're telling the truth. This is the truth. You're just trying to cast doubts in this. That, Did you see the math we used? <laughs> yeah. The, the numerological analysis. I mean, we spent a lot of time on this. You can't make that up. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, the professor did that. Uh, three. <clears throat> that sounds like a cabal lie. I think. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I have to say that that's very unlikely to me. Anyone else? Yes. <laughs> that is also a violation of birth law. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it, it clearly, and it's evil too. Yes. Oh damn! I didn't think of that. <laughs> Thank you. You want to be a grad student? He's <laughs> speaking the truth. And there's six letters in DEF CON. Oh. 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 I don't know. That's, that is obviously a coincidence. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, what's that? Uh, not from us, but you'll be doing a good deed. The question was if you get a t-shirt for spotting the cabal. Just take them back in the alley and beat them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they should, but uh, it's pretty clear that the cabal has completely infiltrated Congress. I mean, they act like a bunch of morons. I, that's the only explanation. <laughs> yes. Sorry, say that again? What? <laughs> Gibberish. Uh, probably a brain controlled malfunction. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, what's that? You'd be surprised. Uh, that's the professor's van. I don't drive a panel van because I don't need to do things in that. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, what? No, there's enough of us here where there's strength in numbers. They cannot kill us all. Well, they, they could, but nothing. Just, we have to take the risk. It's worth it. We have to take the risk. Yes, you're the ugly one in the front. <laughs> Are you talking heads part of the cabal? Uh, yeah, again, that's gibberish. But more brain plan plant malfunctions. <laughs> uh, we believe there's a paperwork mistake. L lies, a lot of lies. Yes. God damn, no! We should have had some better security here. Anyone else? Get in! Anyone? Uh, yeah, you can get them at any hardware store. Pitchforks, torches are harder to find than pitchforks. 
But you look up on the internet, I'm sure there's a website that'll show you how to make torches. Anything else? Uh, no, that's just proof they're after us. Yeah. I, I that's, like that's, a, it's, that's like leaving a dead horse in somebody's bed. Yeah, or a, or a, a mannequin tag. Yeah. Pitchforks have four prongs. That's why they have a solution. Uh, that is true. There are some three pronged pitchforks too, but yeah, the fourth ones are clearly what we'd need for a torch and pitchfork bob. Sounds like a crazy question to me. I don't think that was... Well, you're, I mean, nobody cares. Ask what you had to say. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, this was a, a okay. It's hard to say. This is a tactical black turtleneck. This is one of the uh, extra dark ones. It was uh, seven hundred dollars, and well worth it. I, I mean, I'm not. I didn't invent the turtleneck, and I don't claim that. I, but I was the first to recognize its tactical potential. Wait a minute. Steve Jobs wears a black turtleneck. Is he in the resistance as well? No. No. <laughs> He's just a tool. Yes. <laughs> They, Apple has a class A uh, network segment. They really do. Why are you using an Apple? It's not my choice. <laughs> okay, anyone else? All right, thank you very much. Be careful.